Hello everybody and welcome to Clay U 2.0 webinar. Happy to be here sharing Clay U 2. I think it's uh, our new solution that will allow you to freeform modeling inside the Rhinoceros. I am pretty sure you will love it and today we will have this 45 minutes to show you why you will love it. This is Xavier Rofes and with me we have Xavier Marudan who is uh, the one who will show you Clay U2 in life. Hi everyone. Hello. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Yes, I'm, uh, thanks is everyone okay for attending. You? Yeah, totally. Good, good. Thank you, Marudan. Also, You're welcome. Mark Palacios and Pedro Lobredo will assist us with your questions, so do not hesitate to ask anything anytime using the chat section. We are three of us ready to answer your questions and Xavier Marodan will be, as I said, conducting the, the session. As always, we start with a very short PowerPoint explaining who we are, what is Clay U2, a little bit about the th theory, just to, just to uh, put you on the, at, the, at the same page as us, and then Marodan will show us Clay U2. As you know, for those who have been Assisting to all our webinars, we are TDM Solutions. We are a company based in Barcelona, founded in 2001 by Rafael de Molino. And today we are happy to say that we are worldwide with over 75 resellers that are offering trainings and consultancy and, of course, selling our solutions. Which are our solutions? I guess m most of you know Rhinogol, our software for jewelry. This one, Clayu, and, of, and also Rhinoness, Rhinoboss, and Skinny 3D for, for different markets. Also mentioned that in Clayu 2, Rhinoboss is inside this second version. Since November 20, 2014, we are part of the Staller Group. Staller is uh, the leader of jewelry uh, manufacturing in the United States, and uh, it's uh, a honor to, to be part as well as this, it is the company GemVision, who's um, also developing free um, jewelry solutions for uh, based on computer. So, what do we have today? We have Clayu 2. Clayu 2 is our new solution. We believe it's very easy to use. It's ideal for product designers, jewelers, sculptors, people who work with uh, wood work with wood, consumer goods automotive, marine, and of course Clayu is meant for manufacturing. Everything that you do in Rhino with Clayu, data can be easily exported to any STL OBG file for manufacturing. Clayu 2, the ones that are familiar with uh, Clayu 1 and other freeform solutions in Rhino, they use a technology called SubT. Well, Clayu 2 has of course this subdivision technology, but also emboss and sculpting. This is the only software inside Rhinoceros that allow you to sub the emboss and sculpt inside the same Rhino interface. We we realized that there were there was no solution for that inside Rhino and Rhinoceros community, which is huge, which is big, deserve a solution like this. That's why we came out with Clay U2. So to put you um on page. SubD, we all know SubD technology, it's, it's the possibility to create organic designs, however complex. In order to say it in the easiest way and do not spend much time with the theory, I would say that SubD is basically pull and push. You select faces or you select edges or you select points and you move them accordingly until you create the, the, desired, the desired model the desired object. Of course, being, sorry for that, let me go back. Of course, being a Rhino plugin, you can later convert any Clayu object to NURBS and keep using the standard Rhino tools. This is subdivision. What is Emboss? Emboss is also a tool to create freeform shapes but based on curves. We can easily import any image, we can uh, trace any curve using Rhino, and then 
we will we will convert these curves into an embossed object. It's very easy, it's uh, super cool, and as you can see in this image, you can create very, very detailed objects. And finally, we have Sculpt. Sculpt is basically to, to brush any object. Before in Rhino, there was no solution like that, so we all had to go to third-party companies like ZBrush, like Sculptris. Um, others based, web based. But now we, we have this inside Clayu. So, as I said, no need to go to third different interface, three different softwares, three different purchases. Now everything is inside Clayu. And hopefully we will be able to show it if we have time, of course. As you can see here, we talk a little bit about the key benefits. I'm not going to explain all of them. Just remember that Clayu 2, we offer three technologies in one. It's very interesting for reverse engineering. Today, it's, it's quite useful to import any, any mesh, any object from any other software, and make some modifications, right? So, Clayu allowed that. You can import any mesh, and you will convert it to a Clayu object for keep editing, to sculpt it, to um, use sub D, even to use emboss, we can easily convert any mesh or, for instance, uh, these planes object into Clayu and keep editing. But the good thing about Clayu is that we do not lose precision. It's a freeform tool, of course, that uh, we might lose it, but Clayu allows us always to define any measure that we need. So we will never lose this uh, precision touch that uh, right now is uh, that good. And I said, the final idea of Clay 2 is manufacturing. We all want to design things in the computer and then, and then be able to manufacture with these uh, popular 3D printers, with CNC machines. Then Clay is ready for that. It's ready to export in in a perfect closed mesh and and manufacturing. That's what we all want, right? So, this is what we are going to model within these 40, 45 minutes. As you can see, we dedicate this session to Batman. We have the Batman motorbike, we have the Batman logo, and we have the Batman mask. Our first idea, our initial idea, was to design the entire motorbike, but with 40 minutes, that's no way that we can do it because it, it takes time. That's, that has uh, so many detail. But what we are going to do is show the, you the main, the main parts of this motorbike, and in future uh, videos that we will publish on our YouTube channel or Vimeo channel and on our website, we will be showing in different videos all the different parts of, of this Batman motorbike. Then, in I think it takes no more than three minutes, we will create the Batman logo. And at the end, Marodan promised me that he is able to sculpt the Batman mask on or about 10, 15 minutes. So that's going to be challenging for them, but hopeful for him, but hopefully uh, he will be able to do it. Inform you that um, this is not a learning webinar, this is more an informative uh, session. We want to show you what Clayu is capable of, and we will probably not explain all the modeling parts in detail. Marudan will try to show you a quick overview of the main tools and how they work, but of course within 40 minutes we cannot cover everything. But just to get an idea of what Clayu is capable of to do it, uh, this session will be excellent for that. And remember that on our website, tmsolutions.com slash learn, you can find videos and tutorials in more detail. So, Marodan, are you ready to rock and roll? Yeah, totally. Thanks a lot for your uh, presentation, Tavi. You're welcome. It's all about you now. 
Okay, so how are you? I'm, as I said before, uh, thanks so much for attending. I'm going to close, well, I'm going to minimize this PDF. So that's Rhino, and this is our toolbar for uh, Clay 2.0. As you can see here, we have three tabs. The first one is Subdim, the second one it's uh, for Emboss, and the third one uh, for Sculpting. Uh, what we have to do, always it's just turning on Clayu, and it appears this toolbar on viewport that we call, so we can change the different gambles, the selection modes, uh, the display to basically one smooth model, and the last one is the hotkeys. Uh, I'm going to activate the hotkeys and I'm going to show you the hotkey settings. So with hotkeys active, uh, it allows us to run all the commands with our keyboard. So it makes faster and easier and more comfortable to model anything when we use our keyboard instead of uh, going every time to every tab and opening one by one. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to show you the, the motorbike uh, finally modeled, so I challenge you to guess what I'm modeling while while I'm creating different pieces okay of the motorbike so I turn you to discover what's the the model I'm doing so first of all I'm going to start with a cylinder okay with these gumballs I can just change the the height and the width or I can also change it here on the on the right panel I'm going to increase the subdivision in the radius I'm going to increase it even more so I can put more subdivisions than the slider the slider's maximum is 25 but for sure, with the input, I can put the value that I want. I'm going to reduce one, the, the division height of my cylinder, and I'm going to create something like that. Perfect. Uh, with the workflow of uh, Clayo, as the same in RhinoGold, our softwares, we always have to validate all the commands that we are creating. So I'm going to click here to validate. And here I have my uh, cylinder created. I'm going to change the display mode to shaded. And now, instead of clicking to select by object, I'm going to click 4, that it's my uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's for uh, object selection. And I can also change the gumballs with uh, W, E, and R. Okay, so I'm going to click on my object. I'm going to click E of my keyboard for changing the gumball mode to uh, rotate, and I'm going to rotate it. Okay, now I'm going to click W to move, and I'm going to go to the front view. I displayed in shaded mode also, and I'm going to move it more or less uh, to uh, this uh, axis point. Okay, perfect. I'm going to go back to the um, three perspective. And right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click two for selecting edges. I'm going to select one edge and I'm going to click L to select the full loop of edges that I have in here. Okay, with my tab icon, as you can see, I can change the display mode from subdivided to uh, the basic view. Maybe that's uh, kind of smooth, so you cannot uh, check too much difference. So I'm going to go to this uh, to this view, and I'm going to extrude all these uh, edges in here. So I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard. So I'm holding Alt right now, and I'm moving the gumball, and that's why I'm creating this extrusion instead of just moving the edges. Okay, so holding Alt, I can create extrusions instead of uh, moving uh, anything. Okay, so I'm going to click R. And I'm going to scale in 3D a little bit, something like that. I'm going to click W again, and I'm going to create this uh, another extrusion, holding Alt again. Okay, now I'm going to hold Alt again to create this extrusion, and I'm going to go to the perspective view, and I'm going to use the combo mode to reduce that a little bit, something like that. So I'm going to click W again to change the display mode to the, the gumball to move mode. Now I'm going to click X for extruding, now R for changing my gumball to scale, and now I'm going to scale it something like that. Perfect, maybe I'm going to move it a little bit up there, perfect. I'm just creating one half because uh, later I'm going to create the symmetry of that half, so uh, at the moment this is uh, what I'm looking for. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just clicking on uh, X again, and with my scaling, create another extrusion in here for adding resolution to this object. I told you that I challenge to know what this object is. I know that it's so easy, but I'm going to do exactly the same. So extruding, I'm creating uh, more uh, subdivisions for this for this object. Okay, uh, in here I'm going to create someone like this. Extrude again, move it like this, perfect, okay, maybe a little bit 
more. Now I'm gonna end my object doing something like that. Maybe another extrusion here. Okay, perfect. So uh, now we're gonna add some uh, some cool parts on the object. So for example, I'm gonna select all these four faces and I'm gonna insert them. So I'm clicking I on my keyboard. So I'm creating different insets on, on these parts. So I'm gonna insert again, I'm validating. So I'm clicking those four here and validating again. Maybe that's a rough part, but it's gonna look like uh, amazing after creating the extrusions. So it's the key of, of this piece. Okay, so after finishing creating the insets, I'm gonna select all the parts in here. So I'm gonna select all the faces that I already insert in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude it uh, into the inside part. So I'm gonna hold out again and I'm gonna extrude it. Okay, something like that. I'm gonna extrude again. Okay, perfect. Now if I smooth the object, I have something like this. That's uh, quite cool. And what I'm gonna do right now, it's adding different subdivisions in here. So I've clicked G on my keyboard. I'm gonna disable grid snap. So it's gonna allow me to uh, change the the sharpen edges in here. So as you can see in here, it's so rounded. So when I, for example, add two loops of edges in here, this is not a sharpen edge, So, but it's more sharpen than it was before. Okay, so I'm gonna work a little bit with these uh, loops, okay, to create my, uh, my desired shape in here. Okay, something like that. Maybe I'm gonna add a new one in here and maybe also another one in there. Okay, perfect. And what I'm going to do right now, it's going to the front view and I'm going to add details to this part in here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now, okay, I'm selecting this part also and I don't want this part. So I'm going to select it another way. So I'm going to select the three faces in here and I'm going to select the V direction. Okay, to select everything, I, I've clicked uh, V on my keyboard. So now I'm going to click uh, I on my keyboard, it's to create an inset, but I want an inset individually, so in every selection that I have to create one inset. So I'm going to activate this checkbox in here to activate individual inset, and I'm going to set a uh, so small distance, something like that. Perfect, I'm going to validate. And now what I'm going to do is click on X for extrude. So it appears different values in here, I'm going to reduce the distance, and what I'm also going to do it's add one more subdivision. Instead of one, I'm gonna set two subdivisions, okay, to get a better result in here. So maybe something like this, it's gonna be perfect for, for my model. Okay, and I'm gonna validate. Okay, in here, as you can see, I have like the track, like a track uh, piece in here. So what I'm gonna do right now, it's, well, I think it's quite okay, so I'm gonna just select by object in here and I'm gonna create the symmetry. So I'm gonna create the symmetry in here and when I apply a symmetry, it appears this, uh, this small box in here. So I want the uh, symmetry on the X axis, so I'm gonna click on X and I want to merge the object because I want the object to be one piece. And as you can see in here, this is because we are merging with a threshold so this is the value that makes me just merge both parts. So this value is so big, so I'll have to change it maybe to oh, 01, perfect. So now I'm merging the object perfectly. And at the end, I just have to uh, validate, okay? So I'm gonna click here on validate, and here I have only one piece. And as you can see on the inside part, here are two loops of naked edges in here that I don't want to be, uh, to be naked because this is an open object, so I wanna close it right now. So what I'm gonna do is just go to the selection tab and click on select naked edges. Okay, and you have selected the two loops, one on the other side and one on the other one. And as in both sides, I have the same number of edges in one and in the other one, I can bridge them, so I'm gonna click B on my keyboard and I'm gonna bridge them. Okay, so I'm creating an inner uh, surface, so to join the the object. So when when I smooth it, this is the result that I can get in here. Okay, so uh, I 
I guess that you know or you or you may know what's this object. So in rendered mode, it's something like that. Okay, it's one part of the motorcycle. I'm sure you know which one. Okay, so that one object. Uh, I'm not going to save this this file because I already have this this one created. So I'm going to open a new one. So just a new one. I'm. I don't want to keep anything. I mean, yeah. Um, thank you for the first model. It has been great. Um, I have received some questions and not only questions but also suggestions that you are a you expert user and you mainly use hotkeys to go faster. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool for for modeling. Um, but some of them, uh, they, are, they are asking if it's possible to show where you can find the tool you're going to use, I mean to use the toolbar. Is that is that possible? Yeah, totally. Perfect. So uh, on the next model I'm going to use, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to use any hotkey, no problem. Is that okay? Yes? That's perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so we are fine with time, right, Xavi? Uh, okay, so... Yes, we are, we are. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to create another model that uh, I'm going to start using Curves of Rhino. Okay, so I'm going to go to a front view and I'm going to use a polyline here. So I'm going to active grid snap and I'm going to show you how to create a model just uh, based or starting from, from different curves, okay, Rhino curves. So I'm going to create the second one, maybe something like that, okay. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is just place it where they have to be. So maybe something like, I mean, something like this. It's going to be, it's going to be okay. Maybe not uh, in here. Perfect. So now what I'm going to create, it's, I'm going to active play you for sure. And I'm going to create a loft. And maybe you're going to ask, why are you using polylines instead of a curve? And this is because in polylines we have different control points. So we have one here, one here, one here, and one here. So with ClayU we can detect polylines and create just one subdivision in any of these uh, of these control points. So later I'm going to have more control to these points. So I'm going to go to uh, the second tab and I'm going to click on Loft in here. So it's the same command than, uh, than in Rhino, but it's generating ClayU objects. So in here we have different subdivisions, so I'm going to get rid of all the subdivisions and I'm going to set just one in, in, in curves and steps. So I display it in, in basic view, I click in, in here to just display from basic to smooth. As you can see I'm creating just one subdivision on every control point that I have on my polyline. Okay, so this is the result that I was looking for and that's why I create a polyline. Okay, so now I'm going to validate. Perfect. Now I'm going to select the curves. Okay, and, and I'm going to get rid of the curves. Okay, I don't want I don't want them to bother me while I'm modeling. So uh, what I'm going to write now is I'm going to divide this face in here. So I'm going to go to the to addition tab and divide. So when we have divide, uh, we can divide by points, but we can also divide like this way. So I can choose a point and just click on it to divide, okay, something like that. And I'm going to go to the front view, I'm going to display it in shaded mode. So uh, I'm going to turn off hotkeys just in case uh, I want to <laughs> I want to change it, okay. So now I'm going to select by points, I'm going to select those points in here that I've created and I'm going to select and I'm going to move it something like this to create the shape that I'm looking for. Okay, maybe also moving this point a little bit in here, perfect. And uh, what I'm going to do now is giving them a little bit of uh, of more shape. So this is so straight, so I don't want that. So I'm going to uh, divide again. And as as I have point selection, it's going to allow me to divide by point, but I want the, the old loop. So I'm going to select faces in here, and I'm going to divide again by faces. So it's going to appear this menu that, we, that we've seen before. Okay, so I'm going to click, for example, in here. And I'm going to right click, just Rhino, uh, Rhino workflow to run the last command that I had and clicking again in here. Okay, and what I'm going to do right now is go into the top view, display in shaded mode, 
selecting all the, the new loop that I've created right now and I'm gonna scale it a little bit just to give them a little bit more shape. For sure I'm 3D scaling so it's it's moving everything here but I'm totally fine with that because what I'm going to right now it's just uh, selecting these these three edges in here and I'm gonna scale it right here perfect and maybe I'm gonna move it a little bit upper perfect and I'm gonna do also the same in here so I'm gonna scale it and I'm gonna move it something like that and I'm gonna move it in here okay uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give them uh, give this object uh, this is only a surface so I'm gonna give them a, an extrusion so volume so I'm gonna go to the third tab to edition tab and we have a comment called shell so when we click on shell it's gonna allow me with this small gamble to just uh, define uh, thickness in here okay and I can validate and here I have my uh, object perfectly created okay and in here I'm gonna add some details so uh, so for example I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna divide again so I'm gonna click here and divide yeah the shortcut for divide it's D so I'm gonna divide in here and in here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this face I'm gonna select uh, this uh, V direction it's the other one so I'm gonna run the command again so I'm right clicking okay and what I'm going to do now is uh, extrude to the inner part. So I'm going to I'm going to go to Edition, and in here we have Extrude. So when I click on Extrude, by default it's just moving all my faces in one direction. So what I want to do is move every face by his normal. So I am moving every face by his normal, but I don't want it uh, to the outside part. I want it to the inside part. So uh, something like this. Perfect, and now what I'm going to do is just validate. Okay, now if we just display it, we can see that this is not the shape that we are looking for. It's close, but it's not because we have to uh, define different divisions in here. So that's why I'm going to run the command divide. So now I'm going to give the object the, the look that I want uh, to have. So I'm going to add one subdivision in here, also one in here maybe two on the inner part that we have extruding there maybe I'm gonna add one in here I'm gonna deactivate read snap again maybe another one here on the bottom part and maybe one loop here on the back, back side part and I'll have to maybe create two of them in here so now when I subdivide that as you can see we have changed a lot the the, the geometry so it's exactly the same I've only add different uh, divisions but as you can see right now we have like a more a smooth more realistic <laughs> object okay so what I'm going to write now is just select the object and I'm going to create the symmetry as we've done before so I'm going to go to a third tab on symmetry and I'm going to set the axis where I want the symmetry on and I'm going to click on merge and if that if this merge does not merge my object what I have to do is increase my threshold. Now it's perfect, and as we've seen on the other example, uh, we can get rid of that with uh, clamping. Uh, why this appears? That's because in here we have different faces. As you can see, we have faces in here. So when we are trying to merge both parts, uh, uh, there are two coplanar faces in, in the middle. Okay, so the, the geometry is wrong. What we have to do is just uh, activate clamping in here, so it's getting rid of these coplanar faces inside. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna do before ending my symmetry is I'm gonna add a, a new a new division, maybe something in here. Perfect, because I want just uh, to have a little bit this like it's not like a creased edge, but I want to notice that there is a, a edge right here. Okay, so it's it's better for for my rendering. So what I'm going to write now is just validate my symmetry and here I have my second object of the Batman motorcycle if I display in red mode with the light division that we had I've created this kind of like it seems that there are two different pieces but or it's the same piece blended so I'm giving a, a different look to to my piece so that's the, the second one I hope that explaining every piece uh, so every every tool one by one 
uh, you could follow it better. Okay, so that's the second piece. So if you want to add anything. Um, no, Marlon, everything is fine. The only thing they are commenting, which makes a little sense, is that um, of course they would like to see something in more detail to see exactly the tool you are using, um, maybe to make the common uh, area a little bigger so they can follow exactly the tool you're using. Uh, let you know that most of our attendees, or I would say all of them, are experienced 3D users. So um, you can you can get into some details that they will perfectly understand. And another thing, because there's some always some lag between what we do and what they see and hear. If you mm -hmm. could go a little slower, that could that could be super cool. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'll try to make it present. Uh, Thank you, man. So, if we have time, I'm gonna model one last piece with sub -G. Okay. Yeah, I guess that this is a uh, an okay. So I'm gonna open uh, a new one, <clears throat> and again I'm gonna active. Uh, now I'm going to active hotkeys, so I'm going to try to merge uh, both. We've done one case with no hotkeys and another one with hotkeys. So now I'm going to start with a box. Okay, so in here what I'm going to do, I'm holding control to change all the subdivision at the same time. So what I'm going to write now, it's changing the height. And I'm going to, I'm going to double the height and I'm going to add one subdivision more to, uh, to the height. Okay, so where when I'm validating in here I'm displayed in shaded mode, I have this kind of it's it's kind of a capsule if I smooth it, but uh, I'm gonna add different subdivisions to avoid that. Okay, so I'm gonna go to right view, shaded mode, I'm gonna move by points, and I'm gonna move those points, something like that. Perfect. And what I want to do right now in here it's add an an insertion in here, so uh, I'm gonna click D. Now I have points active, so I don't want it. I'm gonna click D. That was the divide command that we had in here. Okay, so I'm clicking D. Something like that. I'm gonna click D again, and D again, and also D again, and D again, and maybe the last one uh, on the top. Okay. And what I'm going to write now is just click on three to select by uh, faces. So I'm going to select these uh, both faces in here, and I'm going to set an inset. So I click in, I click I on my keyboard. So I want just something like this, perfect. And I'm going to validate. So in here I'm going to hold Alt to create another extrusion to the inner part. So I'm going to create something like that. Okay, for sure I can smooth it and you can see that this is the result that we have right now. And what I'm going to add in here is, for example, I'm going to add uh, a new loop in here on the top, a new loop, I'm clicking D again to divide, a new loop in here and maybe another one in here. So that's more uh, the result that we are looking for. Okay, and in here we have the, these two uh, these two faces in here that I'm going to insert again, so I'm going to click I for insert and just check in individual insert. I'm going to uh, have both insets on uh, my geometry. So I'm going to click on validate again and now I'm going to hold out for extruding again. Okay, and maybe a last time and this is the shape that we have right now. Okay. For sure, I guess you to know which this part is. That's so easy for sure. So I'm going to move all those faces a little bit in here. So uh, as you can see, mostly the commands used are insert and extrude are the two most used commands by far. So I'm going to insert again, and I'm going to extrude again, and I'm extruding again, and scaling a little bit. OK, and I'm holding Alt and extruding again. OK. And in here we're gonna add just uh, a details in in this uh, in this frontal part of this uh, of this piece. So I'm gonna go to the right view, and maybe I'm gonna end it with something like that. Maybe we can spend some time 
uh, in here. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is just uh, I'm going to select these uh, faces in here. Maybe now I'm going to select just that one. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to click X on my keyboard. So uh, X is for uh, for extruding. So I'm going to increase the distance in here. But uh, if we calculate the average of all my faces selected, the result is O. So I have to just extrude by normal. If we want all of them, just move by normal. Or in this case, one by one. That it's going to allow me to create one extrusion per, uh, per selection that I had before. Okay, so I'm going to create something, uh, something like that. Perfect. So I'm going to validate in here. So what I'm going to do right now is just uh, select those edges in here, clicking R for scaling, and just scaling them a little bit, okay, just to have a more uh, defined shape in here. Okay, and from the right view, what I'm going to do in here is just adding different subdivisions to the, to the old object from this part, so another one in here, and maybe in here, that's perfect. That's what we are looking for. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to add different insets and then we're going to bridge to create holes on uh, this part. So what I'm going to write now is just selecting all those big faces where we want to create the insets on. So or in those, perfect. And what I'm going to do right now is clicking I on my keyboard so it's uh, this command in here, inset, sorry. Okay, and now I'm going to click on individual inset. So I'm going to just refine the distance that I want, so something like that, it's going to be perfect. Okay, so when I set my distance, maybe a little, uh, a little bit more distance, something like that, I'm going to validate. And what I have to do right now is just uh, the boring part of just bridging, so I've clicked B, so as, as we have to do it a lot of times, we can just, now I'm going to run the command, it's bridge, okay, for assuring the bridge, I can add different subdivisions on the inner part of I can bridge using a curve or the tangent curve that we create automatically, but in this case, I don't, I don't need that, so I'm just validating again, now I'm going to run the last command, so right-clicking, and I'm going to right-click again to validate my bridge, so now I'm going to click P again and validate. Maybe it's a little bit, a little bit bored. Bored. This is going to uh, give us an amazing result on on our piece. Okay. So I'm going to try to go as fast as I can. Go. We're going to. We're not layering anything. Just repeating the common bridge. So we can use bridge different ways. So just clicking B on my keyboard and I can validate or right click to validate all my commands or I can select both faces and go in here and bridge. Okay, and just validating. So only two more. Perfect. And perfect. So this is our uh, main part. So when we smooth that, we can see that this is, maybe this is not the result that we were looking for. Maybe this top part is a little bit like rounded and we really don't want it. So what we can do is just select all those faces in here, clicking W to move, okay, and holding out. I'm going to create a new subdivision in here, something like that. And as you can see, there's a huge difference between this one in here and this one on the side. Okay, so I'm going to try to make uh, exactly the same. So those are tricks for when when we are modeling. Okay. So I think in sub D we are mostly using the same tools. So we just have to know how to combine them and and use them properly and when needed. And everything is possible. Okay. So now we have something like that. Uh, what I'm going to do in here is just creating an inset in here with a huge distance. Maybe if I want a, a hole, a truly rounded hole, I'm going to try to have a, a more square uh, in here. So I'm going to create two uh, extrusions in that part. So I'm going to have a perfect hole in here. So if I want uh, more resolution, I can 
click G for create another subdivision on the inner part. And here we have our uh, our last uh, subdiv piece. That's quite a beautiful piece. I, I really love it. Okay. So I think we we're done with with our subdiv part. So if Chavi don't let me, <laughs> if Chavi let me continue or. Or if there's anything that you, yes. you want to tell me? Yes, um, you could you could go straight. I think now we will start with emboss. Just comment that uh, from what I see in the questions, a lot of people are asking, and I totally understand them that um, they would like to see um, probably every tour in more detail. And I wanna I wanted to say this at the end of the presentation, but I would do it now. Um, we are working on. Uh, videos, in short videos, about four minutes, five minutes videos, showing each tool of Cleo. Right now on our website, we already have about 15 or 20 videos and our idea is and commitment is to add new videos showing each tool of Cleo every week as well as uh, publish new uh, full tutorials like, um, like the ones that we already have, like the robot or like the flamingo. Um, so it's, it's it's our commitment to um, give you as much videos and, inf and training resources as possible. And we use the webinars to give quick overviews to see the possibilities of uh, the, the, the webinars. Also, because I have seen that most of you on the jewelry, which I understand because we all know each other from uh, Rhino Gold, um, in future webinars we will dedicate uh, specific sessions just for jewelry so um, we will try to cover everything so uh, Maru you can follow with uh, emboss yeah perfect thanks so much uh, I'm gonna run uh, another rhino sorry okay so uh, what we're gonna do right now it's we are changing the tab to emboss so uh, we are uh, creating an emboss piece. So what emboss does it just creates reliefs from from curves that we have create or uh, from curves that we can extract from pictures. So the first of all that I'm going to show you is this common it's called raster to vector. So uh, it's uh, charging emboss right now. So it appears this panel on the right when we can select an image. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to look for the image. It's that image I think yeah so I have an image that I, I found on internet so uh, what we can do is extract the curves from this image if there's enough contrast between different colors in here so I have just clicked to uh, to this small uh, icon in here I can just increase the smoothness a little bit or even more something like that perfect okay and just we have to validate so it's gonna create just a curve okay so it's creating only a curve so i'm going to activate the gamble and i'm going to reduce a lot the size in here because i don't need it uh, that big and i'm going to run the command uh, go to center the the rhino command go to center to place it exactly on on the middle for sure in here i can create more curves and that stuff but i think that with this uh, small uh, sample we can just uh, get the idea of how uh, emboss tool works. Okay, so now I'm going to run emboss. So it appears this small panel that's, that says, okay, this is a new project of emboss. And we have to define the sheet in here. So I can increase the sizes of the width and the height just to fill my, my curve in here. So now it's filling all my curves. So it's perfect for me. I can define the resolution. So due to performance uh, issues, I want to set low resolution because it's an example. We're not going to print that. Okay. And we're going to use the type core. So I'm going to try to use a cap on the bottom. Okay. And uh, profiles on the top. Okay. And now I'm going to just click on validate. Okay. And in the right, it appears the emboss panel. Uh, emboss works with uh, operations. So each curves that we apply we call them operations so i'm going to click in this plus icon so i'm going to add a new operation so i need to define a curves so i'm going to click one curve and i'm going to click the bat curve and i'm going to validate okay so when we apply a curve it appears the two gambles that 
uh, said me, okay, this is the profile that I want to use. For sure here I have different profiles that I can change. I have different uh, things I can change like uh, the height, the width and everything. Okay, or I can just use the gumballs to move it and uh, get my result. So in here I have a button called refresh. So when we click on that, it's going to calculate my, uh, my geometry. So this is a geometry I have right now, only with one curve. Okay, if we like it, that's totally okay for sure. I'm going to uh, hide this small gamble in here to, that it's hiding the profile that I'm using because this is the result that I want. So just it's super easy to, to get, as you know. For sure, in here we can add more uh, more operations with different curves and add uh, more complex geometries. But uh, what I'm going to show you, it's I think that it's even better. I'm going to just paint a texture on this uh, on this geometry. So I'm going to add a new operation, but instead of creating an operation uh, by profile, that is that one, I'm going to uh, create one that's called carbon copy by brush. So uh, this tool allows me to uh, load a texture and just paint on my object with this texture. So I'm going to take this uh, this texture in here I find also I also found that on internet. So it's it's a previous uh, Batman logo with like rounded uh, uh, like rounded texture in here. So as you can see here it's a brush on my mouse cursor. So what I can do in here is just like painting. Okay, so when I try to paint, I'm going to paint this uh, this bump from from the bottom to my new object. Okay, so for sure I can just paint some of the parts of uh, the object, or as I want, I just want to uh, fill all my uh, my bud icon with this texture on the bottom. So easily I get this uh, this amazing uh, emboss that it's only with a curve and with a texture. And here I have my, my result. So when I finish uh, my model, I only have to refresh before validating. So here we have my object. And I click on validate just to create the, the invoice object and, calcul and calculate all the operations that I've, that I've been uh, doing all the time. And here we have a decimator. What we can do with the decimator if, uh, if this file is too heavy, so we can decimate by 50% and it's going to reduce a 50% my, uh, my weight without uh, losing any, uh, any resolution or without losing topology, okay? For sure, in this we have low, uh, used low resolution on Rhinon Boss, so we don't have to decimate anything. So I'm clicking here on Validate and it calculates and adds to the document my, uh, my BAT logo in here with my amazing texture that we have created. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save this file because I'm going to use it like a bad logo webinar. Okay. Perfect. And what I'm going to do in here is maybe I'm sure I have the curve in here. Okay, so I'm going to create a new layer to put these curves on the layer and to hide the curve. Okay, and I only have the object on the scene, so I'm going to click Control S to save it. And what I'm going to do right now is just opening the the full model cycle. Okay, so I'm going to go to my files. And I'm going to open the model cycle in here. So I'm going to import the model cycle. Okay, it's ten ten ten. Marudan, when you while you are opening this, let me comment that people are a few people are asking about that. So uh, right now, this emboss file is a is a mesh. Yeah. So, so, because it is, we define it as a cap. As you can see on the right side, is a closed mesh. Yeah, it's it's capped so on the you, bottom. You, you, so, uh, so you, you can. can yeah. Sorry, oh, you go. You go. You. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, for sure, it's a closed mesh because we chose the option to cap. Okay, so it creates automatically this cap on the bottom. Okay, so yes, it's it's ready to print because it's a closed mesh right now. Okay. Of course, some of them, just, just one second, Marlon, because some of them are saying that later when you send it to some three printers, these low-cost three printers, you cannot print all this texture, but this is basically because yeah. of the three printer. Uh, well, first of all, this is because 
the height the height that you have defined on the texture of course if it's uh, 0 0.01 there is no 3D printer out there that can actually print that but if you have a bigger files that you can uh, define higher textures definitely uh, any 3D printer that prints about 25 microns or less uh, will print it out we have done some tests here and it does it does Thanks so much, Ali, for you. Ahead, Thanks so much, Ali. Um, just um, let, let me say just one thing. Um, we are already over time. It's been 52 minutes. We are still we still need to show scope. So um, do your best to do it as fast as possible. I really don't want people to um, spend more time than the one we said. So um, I don't want to put your pressure but just a challenge that you will need to stop in five in five minutes perfect no problem we are uh, almost done with with this model so what I'm gonna do right now is just going to uh, to the motorcycle I'm gonna hide all parts of the motorcycle okay and I'm gonna reduce the sizing here because I want to put this model on uh, on this piece in here so maybe I'm gonna do something like that maybe a little bit smaller so that's okay. I'm gonna go to right view and I'm gonna place it maybe in here. I'm gonna rotate it. Yeah, perfect. And maybe I'm gonna place it there. I've grid snap active. So okay, and in here we're gonna use just two fast bends. So I'm gonna run the command bend from here to here and symmetric. Okay, something like that. Perfect. And I'm going to go also to the front view and I'm going to run the bend again for sure symmetrical. And I'm, I will get something like that. Okay. So uh, now I have my my logo on the motorbike. Oh, those are the curves. So on that part. So I'm going to get rid of the Batman curve. So in here I have my old motorcycle, okay, so with all the pieces, uh, as I challenged you, one piece was, was this, uh, this wheel, the other one was this kind of model in here, like a, a gun or something like that, okay, and the last part was this one where we applied uh, the logo on, okay, so those are the pieces that we were modeling, and the other one are as complex as those ones, so not too much for sure. Okay, so this is the, the final model. Here we can say that, okay, this is our uh, our final piece. Okay, and now let's uh, go to to sculpting. Okay, so let's, I'm going to... Let's go to scope, Marlon. Let's, let's go, go to, to scope. scope. Let's... So, well, I'm going to save um, that, just in, in case. In this in this case, I could, I would need to ask you to um, start slowly showing the interface or the, the tools inside the scope, but once we have shown the tools, I would need to ask you to go fast to show how easy and how fast, if you know the software, you can scope. And later, uh, after that, I would just need to ask one thing because people are asking uh, how you can convert any object from Crayu to to uh, NURBS. So later we, okay. we can we can. We can create something up. in clay okay. and convert it to nurse. But first, let's focus on the sculpting. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Xavi. So I'm going to display in rendered mode, and here I have just a face. Okay, it's it's a, an open mesh right now because there's it's open on the bottom. So I'm going to click on it. Uh, all kind of object works. So all meshes works uh, for sculpting. Okay, so sculpting works on every mesh, no matter if it's STL, OBJ, FBX, so a 3DM file with meshes, so displaying meshes, Clio meshes, Rhino meshes, so with any kind of mesh, okay? So the first of all, it's here, the appears information about vertex and faces, and faces. so uh, this model here, it's, it's with a lot of resolution, so it's okay for us, for sure, we have different tools, these two, these two tools, remesh, and uh, subdivide to create more subdivisions if we need, okay? Uh, in this case, we don't need it. Here uh, on the toolbar or on the toolbar on view board, we have the different tools that we have. 
So uh, they have a total like brush, crease, flutter, inflate, pinch, smooth, twist, and drag. Okay, and we only have different values in here. That is the radius. So when I increase the radius, it increases my radius. If I reduce radius, it reduces the radius of my brush and the intensity. That it's going to change the strength uh, that my brush is applying. Okay, on my model. So I already to is two different sliders. And here on the bottom we have two more options. The first one is symmetry. So we can activate or deactivate symmetry and it appears this uh, this line in here on the on the symmetry axis. And the last one it's move up and move down. We call it up and down. So it's to change the direction of the brush. So for example if I just inflate in here. So now I'm inflating in here. If I active my down part, when I inflate, it's creating a hole instead of an extrusion. Okay, so this is what up and down does. So I'm going to uh, undo all of this. And we're going to start slowly uh, with this model, and then we're going to try to speed up uh, a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to try to use all the tools at the beginning, okay, and then start modeling just a little bit faster. So our first uh, tool that I'm going to use is brush. So I'm going to reduce the radius and also the intensity. Maybe I'm going to increase the radius a little bit. So what brush does, it just creates like an extrusion when we apply it. Okay, something like that. So it's just creating uh, extrusions when we apply uh, this brush in here. Okay. Uh, another tool that we can use is uh, crease. So it's that one in here. So uh, when we apply crease, for example, we're going to apply crease in here with a low radius and maybe more radius and more intensity. So it's going to create this kind of creased edges in here, but for sure I can uh, undo that and create it to the uh, inner part. So I'm creating now holes like creasing with my brush. So for sure I can create something like that and I'm creasing like my my model okay another tool that we have it's called flatten in here for sure we can activate all the tools with hotkeys so flatten it's F okay and what flatten does we're going to try to use flatten here I'm going to reduce intensity okay something like that uh, what flatten does it tries to uh, create our uh, our surface more flatten Okay, so it works on every part that we have. So when we paint on it, I'm going to deactivate the up and down button. So it's just flattening my surface in here. Okay, so when I brush in here, it's trying to just create this flattening surface in here. Okay, another one that we have is inflate. So inflate, it's so similar than, uh, than brush but it allow me to create like uh, more pronounced uh, extrusions so for example i can create maybe i'm going to increase intensity in here so i can create uh, more pronounced extrusions in there or also more pronounced holes okay so more or less that's the result i'm looking for uh, when i'm uh, inflating so creating this kind of small bubbles in here okay uh, the fifth or sixth one, it's smooth, so it's holding S. What a smooth does, it's I'm going to reduce intensity and increase the radius, so it's just smoothing our shape. So in here, for example, I want to just reduce this uh, noise in here, so I'm going to just smooth a little bit. So when I'm smoothing, I'm just getting rid of all imperfections that I have, okay, and I'm getting a perfectly smooth uh, shape in here. Okay, so that's why we use smooth. I always recommend to use smooth after using two or three commands just to get a perfectly smooth uh, shape in here. So uh, as more intensity we have, more uh, we're going to smooth our our model. Okay. And this is another tool, it's twist. I think that we're not using twist on any part of our model, but I'm going to show you anyway. So I'm going to just click in here and I'm going to try to rotate a little bit and it's creating less this, I don't know, like a small horn, so I use twisted surface in here, like twirling, so this is what twist does. Okay, now I'm going to undo the, the twist, 
And the last one, it's drag. So what drag does, for example, I'm going to use drag in here, moving on increase the radius. So it's just pull and push different uh, faces that we have in, in our model. So I can just click on different uh, parts of our model and just uh, pull it, so drag it to the top or to the bottom, okay, to uh, get our desired shape. For example, we're going to use also uh, drag with less intensity on this radius to make this, uh, this mouth to look like it's uh, a little bit more angry, so it's not in, in good mood today, okay, so something like that. So this is uh, this is uh, an overview of all the tools. So I'm gonna try to just make uh, this face look like a little bit, only a little bit, like uh, like Batman. So I'm gonna run all the commands with uh, with my shortcut. So uh, it's the the first letter of of the command. So S is for smooth, for example. Now I'm clicking S for smoothing my my bottom horn in here, something like that. That's perfect. I think that I'm gonna increase a little bit. I'm gonna click on B again, so maybe something like that. And I'm gonna create another extrusion in here. Yeah, that's perfect. And I'm gonna increase a lot the that one in here. Okay. I'm gonna try to increase also uh, that in here. So I'm gonna click S for smoothing that a little bit just. And I'm going to click C for uh, for creasing, and I'm going to create like a creasing here, maybe uh, more like that. Yeah, maybe that's too much, but uh, I'm going to smooth it a little bit, and we're going to refine uh, the result. Okay, so there's, this is no problem in here. Okay, maybe I'm going to try to just with a crease have a more more angry face. So I'm going to just Maybe I'm going to turn the down option in here, so it's more defined, uh, uh, more defined angry face in here, so something like that, maybe like that, okay. I'm going to just make the, the mark of uh, the mask, so I'm going to increase intensity and even the radius, so this is where the mask goes, so something like that, okay, perfect. And the command that I'm going to use right now, it's uh, pinch. So I'm going to click P for pinch that it's going to uh, refine me this edge in here. As you can see, it's joining me all the points that I have in here. So I'm like increasing the resolution on this part. Okay, it's perfect. And I'm going to smooth a little bit those uh, those parts in here. Okay, yeah, it's perfect. So maybe it looks like, it looks more like Catwoman than Batman, but... <laughs> It's the best that we can do is just uh, five minutes. Okay, so uh, for sure we can inflate a little bit more something in here, maybe in the other side. Okay, so uh, adding more strength here on this part and smoothing it a little bit. Okay, something like that. It's going to be cool. Maybe we can just pinch a little bit more the nose in here, okay, to have this more uh, refined edge because it wears a mask. So in here we can smooth it a little bit, okay, something like that. For sure, as more time we spend, better it's going to be the, the result. That's story for sure. So uh, we can add a little bit more detail uh, in here, just creasing on the bottom direction here on the face. So adding more details on, on these inner parts in here. Okay, and also even more in here and on the inside part. And maybe also here, okay, and something like that in here. Perfect. For sure, I'm going to smooth it a little bit. I don't know, Charlie, if it is uh, a good result for a five minutes uh, sculpting. So. It's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, we can improve no, it a I lot. You, just you did, with, with more time, we I can think improve it a lot. Best. So we can just add some details, so just move it a little bit, so to add a little bit more uh, 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 more shaped uh, horns in here. So for sure, uh, the result of the sculpting, it's always a mesh. Okay, so this is important to know. 
and uh, when we have finished our model we always have to uh, validate our our geometry okay for sure we can add more details in every part so uh, we can for example add some muscles in here okay so adding some inflates in here to add some some strength okay something like that in here so just the uh, different body parts in there so you can smooth it a lot okay so this is like yeah this button has gone to the gym a lot oh okay, something like that okay so so this is that's uh, fine, that's fine Manu. I think people can get an idea of what yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sure. options can do it's uh, it's very fun to see I don't I mean I'm not capable to do it at all it's fun just how you create a mask from a, a, a school it's it's pretty cool and I appreciate your speed on modeling that I'm sure with more time you could create something more astonishing but I kind of like this one so I I really appreciate that yeah thanks a lot so just to remind everybody that we are recording this webinar that's uh, coming to an end very soon we will publish it again uh, on our YouTube and Vimeo channel also on our website I know most of you have this lag and you see the the interface uh, efficiently so if we watching the webinar will definitely um, allow you to see much more and of course it will be at the same page that we have all the other videos of Cleo so you can really you can really watch not just this one but all the ones that we have and the ones that we will publish later on remind you that of course we are happy if you like Cleo and you want to purchase right away that's what we like <laughs> the most and you can do it directly on tdapsolutions.com slash store you can do that by contacting our resellers or if there is none even we have 75 sometimes there is none on your area you can just buy it online at the same website and commend you that you can first download the trial version. I said this at the beginning. I repeat it now at the end. You can download Clayu for 15 days. You can play as much as you can. You can use the learning resources. Practice as much as you need. Uh, come us with a lot of questions that you have. Uh, we are happy to have you. We offer free technical support. We are here to make your life easier, especially in the modeling area. So any question, any feedback, any suggestion, we are more than happy to help you. And I I think we we are we are running out of time. It's six ten PM here in Barcelona. I think the guys um like Marudan and Mark and Pedro are uh probably Marudan more exhausted, but it's time to, to come to an end. So just thank you again for all your time. We will spend the last five minutes uh, answering the last questions that you have. And of course, if you have more questions, just email me to uh, info at tdmsolutions.com uh, or, my, or my direct contact, uh, javier at tdmsolutions.com or any of our um, guys in here, you can also email them to support at tdmsolutions.com. We appreciate a lot your time. And thank you, Marudan, for your work. It has been awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, everyone, for attending and for, for the patience. <laughs> I hope you like it a lot. And sure, it has been good. And thank you, Mark. Thank you, Pedro, for assisting on, uh, on the chat. And uh, we will be publishing new webinars very soon. We just need to define uh, what to design, what to model. We have already good ideas, but definitely if you want to see something specific, just email us and we will take it seriously. So again, thank you very much to all. Remember that if you are happy with Clayu, if you want to buy it, I definitely recommend you to contact our resellers tmsolutions.com slash store or tmsolutions.com slash dealers. In there you can find the list of dealers that resell Clayu worldwide. And I hope to see you again. Thank you all. <laughs>